Now then, in a moment, Chrissy is here with the weather. First, though, you've been out looking at a rather different way of getting around London, haven't you? I certainly have. In fact, it reminded me of working in radio when I used to be up in that flying eye, flying across the city. Did you used to be the flying eye? I did. Well, not in London, though, but anyway, we digress. <laughs> um, but yes, I did. I took to the air today in a seaplane from the Thames, and I don't know whether you've been fortunate enough to fly in one. I've no, always wanted to, and I never have. Yeah. It was absolutely fantastic. So let's have a look how I got on. <laughs> The seaplane looks like it could be making a bit of a comeback and today I took to the skies in one of the biggest float equipped planes in the world. Apparently I'm the first woman to fly over London in a twin otter on floats in history. During the 1920s and 30s, seaplanes were regularly spotted on the Thames. Largely used by the upper classes, they operated at least eight flights per week, carrying the affluent to destinations like Egypt and India. However, all this had stopped by 1938 when the jet age arrived and seaplanes became somewhat obsolete. Aviation really started on the, with seaplanes because when aircraft were first invented, there were no airports and uh, the flattest area around was water and, and uh, seaplanes have been in existence as long as aircraft have been in existence. Taking off and landing on the water did feel quite strange but surprisingly it was incredibly smooth. On the water it's quite a bit different. We become a boat on the water and, uh, and navigating is quite different. In this plane of course we navigate with our engines. We don't have any type of rudder or anything else so it's all, uh, it's all based on differential thrust but it's, it's quite different. It's, uh, it takes a lot to learn. It's pretty specialized. There's not many of us doing it. It's a twin otter seaplane, probably one of the biggest float equipped planes in the world. Inside, she's much larger than I thought she'd carry about 19 passengers, but my word, it is noisy. Rescue organisations are among the largest modern operators of seaplanes today due to their efficiency, but they're also used to carry passengers between the Greek and Caribbean islands. We're flying about 900 feet above central London at the moment. The sunshine has come out. The views are just spectacular. There's no glamorous cabin crew offering you martinis and nibbles, but the Twin Otter provides a quick, safe and exciting way to fly. And you can avoid all the terminal queues and fly from the Thames to the Seine in less than an hour. So there you have it. I think it just represents everything romantic about air travel. It, 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 do, well. do you know what? I don't know why. I got a little bit in motion as well when we took off. I don't, I, I can't explain, right, you have got a competition I have, yes, yeah, we could chat all stuff. night, right, who played <laughs> James Bond in the original spoof version of Casino Royale, of course it was David Niven, so congratulations to you, Anthony Williams from Waltham Cross, right, on to more important things like the weather, so let's get the detail.